Hi, my name is Eric Schneider. I'm an applications engineer here at Qualitrol, and today we're going to be talking about the electromechanical thermometers that you might use to monitor transformer temperature or some other device. There are two basic types of thermometers. One's the direct mount, and the other one is the remote mount. The direct mount is fairly easy to tell because it's got a probe coming straight out the back. The remote mount will have a capillary tube that's connected to the probe that goes right into the transformer dry well at some remote location. Now, you could have a winding temperature thermometer or you could have a liquid temperature thermometer. The winding temperature thermometer is going to have a coil that the probe goes into. That coil will be a heater coil that is tapped to a current tap off the transformer. There are a few critical thermometer parameters that you need to know when you're trying to specify a thermometer. The first one is going to be the probe length, the probe diameter, and the thread size that's going to screw into the transformer well. The length of the probe is fairly easy to measure. You want to measure from the tip of the probe to the end of the threads right here. You don't want to measure all the way up to the body, right to the end of the threads. The probe diameter is exactly what it says it is. It's the outside diameter of the probe itself. The threads are a little more interesting because you need to know the diameter and the pitch. Now, one of the things that uh, we have is typically you're talking 3 8 18 NPT threads or 7 8 14 UNF threads. And we have adapters to fit if you have a different size well, but you need to know the thread diameter and the thread pitch in the number of threads per inch. The number of switches and the type of switches. Uh, let's start with the type and flip this around. You've got your Form A switch, which would be a normally open contact, just two wires, and then you've got your Form C switch, which is going to have two sets of contacts, one normally open, one normally closed, and you're going to have three wires for each. Now you can have up to three contacts on a direct mount and up to four contacts on a remote mount. The easiest way to tell is if you look at the face of the dial, you're going to see indicators on there, one for each set of contacts. And then the actual way to tell whether you've got Form A or Form C is you look at the bottom of the connector output and you can count the pins. If you've got one switch and you've got two sets of pins, then that's Form A. If you've got three sets of pins, that's going to be a Form C. The dial range is going to be important. Some winding temperatures will run 0 to 160, some will run 0 to 220. Liquid temperatures will run 0 to 120, typically. The cable length. You're going to need a cable. It's going to screw into this fitting on the bottom of the thermometer. And the length that you need to get back to the control box is important. It's a lot easier to cut off a little extra. They don't stretch real well. On the remote mount, you're going to need to look at the capillary length as well because this capillary is going to run back to wherever you mount the thermometer. If the capillary is too short, you've got a big problem. The other thing with the capillaries is that you want to be careful with the capillaries. Do not bend them tighter than the radius of, say, a full can of Coca-Cola. If you kink the capillary, if you cut the capillary, the thermometer is going to be ruined, so you don't want to do that. Now, if you don't have the part number or you can't make these measurements, the other thing to do is contact the applications engineer by looking at the various parameters we have. We can specify direct mounts out of a database. With a remote mount, we also have universal types that can give you up to three or four switches. They could be winding temperature or liquid temperature and that way you don't even have to worry about what kind of thermometer you've got there. You could even use a remote universal to substitute for a direct if you chose to do that. But bottom line is, if you need to ask some questions, if you want to know how to make the measurements, 
just contact an applications engineer here at Qualitrol, or you can always visit us at the website, www.qualitrolcorp.com. Thanks very much.